Hey, it's done. I picked up a few items today. I just wanted to holler out this one here. These are extremely hot right now. This is an original Atari 2600 from the 80s, I do believe. Box from 1984. Excellent condition. Has everything in it. Not only did I get this, but I also got 30 plus games. I got quite a few here. Nice little stack. There's some more down here as well. These items are selling like mad right now. The price of vintage old school consoles as well as video game cartridges has went up immensely in the last few years. Stuff that maybe five or six years ago was only selling for a few hundred dollars. These days, when they're graded, can sell for some insane amounts of money. We're going to look at some Atari items that are selling right now and that are super hot that you should be looking for right this very second. Just like most any collectible these days, there is a grading service for everything these days. Graded ones of almost anything sell for some good money. Now, the main service that grades these is WADA, W-A-T-A, -A, and you'll see that on most any of these sorts of games. It's the one that's rated the highest for trustability and correct grading. Now, this game here pretty much killed the Atari 2600 system. E.T. was not a very good game. I have played it way back in the day when it first came out. I did have an Atari 2600, and I do look out for them everywhere I go. Right now is probably the best time. I'm getting more for them right this minute than I think I've ever gotten from almost any of the Atari vintage cartridges and game systems. So they're hot right now. This was something that was overproduced, and a bunch of these were chunked off at the end of this. This one still sold graded 9.0, 10 is the highest, for $1,300 basically. Now just a sealed game goes for some good money. This is Adventure, a very common game back in the day. Finding the cartridge for this is incredibly easy. I can pretty much find it if I'm out on almost any day if I run into vintage Atari items. It's one of the most popular games back then. I remember playing this myself. $2,000 sealed like this. Now, if this was graded, it would go for a lot more, but it looks like an excellent copy. Now, here's another decent one. I had this one as well. This one sold for almost $600. This is Star Wars Jedi Arena. Not a super popular game, not the best game in general, but it's sealed in the box in the whole works. Now, you'll see a lot of these that say upside down variant. And I remember these when they first came out, looking at the back of these. The backs of them are upside down, so they pretty much just had the backs printed on incorrectly or sealed improperly. It is a variant. They do go for a little more money in many cases. Excellent one, though. Ten years ago, I could find these in boxes fairly often, even at the thrift stores. These days, they've become almost impossible to find a mint-sealed one for any reasonable price. Marvel was big back then when Atari came out as well. $4,139 for this one. This one does have the upside-down variant as well, and it's high-grade. This is a 9.8, almost a 10, almost a perfect. You won't get much better than this. Frogger, fond memories of playing Frogger as well. $2,164, another 9.8 grade. Now, going back to the heyday of Mario Brothers, this is one of the first Mario Brothers games for a gaming system. This one sealed, as you see it, ungraded for a thousand bucks here, plus shipping. Now, graded wise, this goes for almost twice what you would sell it for ungraded, just like you saw. Now, they don't have to be sealed to be valuable games either. There's quite a few out there, and we still do run into games that are worth hundreds of dollars, even right now. They're just not usually a sealed copy. There were many games that were released privately by small companies that had a small circulation. There were other ones that were promotional. There's demo games as well. Puzzy was one of those scarce games. Now, I never remember seeing this as a child. I do remember seeing an ad for this maybe 15 or 20 years ago for the very first time. As you can see, it went for almost $1,700. Now, here's an interesting one. This is by Avalon Hill. Now, Avalon Hill made like bookshelf games, multiple advanced role-playing style games with tiny little pieces of cardboard used for chips or display and big, huge, massive boards that folded out with add-ons. Avalon Hill games are very well sought after. They did make a couple of video games, and these are insanely scarce in any condition. Even just the cartridge can go for hundreds of dollars. Now, this is out of control. This is sought after by a huge amount of collectors because they just don't show up very often. Now, even an empty box, if you get the right one, can go for some good money. This is the empty box from the Halloween Atari 2600 game. This is by Wizard 
Wizard Video Games. This is a smaller company. They didn't have a lot of great titles, and you couldn't buy them everywhere either. $1,124 for an empty box. Cartridges, as I said, do show up fairly often compared to the boxes. As a child, I just got rid of the boxes. They were a nuisance to take the games in and out, and we had a storage thing that you could slide all of your cartridges into with a lid, no dust on them, and the whole works. And that's what most people did back in the day. So the boxes were discarded pretty quickly. Here's another Wizard video games. This is Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Odd title, but these things were made back in the day, $1,000 on this one. It's not a great game again, it's just the topic matter that makes these pricey. If this was sealed in the box, NOS could have went for five or six thousand dollars possibly. Now here's Miner 2049er. Now this one I do remember, this was by Tiger Vision. I never played it, it was always out of my reach or I saw it in an ad somewhere. But this one looked pretty good. This is a graded one as well, 8.0, $2,850 sealed as you can see. Now, another small company that a handful of games is Apollo, and this is Lockjaw. 900 just for the cartridge in decent condition. It's tested, so it does work as well. Now, here's another scarce one, almost on the rare side. This is Up In Down. I have not seen a copy of this in person. This is by Bally Midway, which made a lot of the arcade stand-up style machines that you would find out in arcade back in those days. $552 for the complete booklet box and cartridge. Here's another Tiger Vision. Espiol, now this is like a space shooter one. Most of the graphics on these were terrible in modern day standards. But as a child, seeing these for the first time when they first came out, it was a big, huge thing for me. So as it was for most of my friends, it was the first time we got to play anything like that at home without popping a quarter into the stand-up machines. That was the only way to play some games. And back then, some were 50 cents. And in the 70s and 80s, when those first came out, that was a lot of money to someone of my age. This one sold for $776. Now here's another one from Apollo again, very scarce, this is Guardian. This one went for $500, box, booklet, and cartridge. Promotional ones now, they did make some that you had to send away for. There were some that were promotional if you bought this or you bought that, you got a game with it as well. This is Chuck Wagon, this is from Purina for dog food. This is an advertisement, basically, $685. Now the game itself I have seen played once, terrible game as well, but it's just fairly scarce. This is just the empty box. Now just being an empty box here, it's still sold for $685 because of the scarcity. Most people weren't looking to get a chuck wagon game back in those days. Now, another odd advertising one is the Kool-Aid Man. This is a very interesting one. Again, just strictly for advertising purposes. This is a sealed game. It's graded again, 8.5, $1,600. You won't find this one every day. Most of these won't show up in the standard collections. But if you look enough, you're going to run into some of these scarce games. I can almost assure you, we do run into valuable games fairly often considering how scarce they are these days. Days. Now here's an insanely scarce item. This is a prototype box. Now these boxes were sent around as advertising, trying to show an example of what the game box would look like. It even says so on the back. It says that there is no cartridge issued with this. It is for promotional only. It also says that the graphics on this could change. There were some of these that got out. They were given obviously to some stores or companies. So some people were given copies of this one. This one went for $2,800. There was never a game in this one ever, but it still sold for that insane amounts of money. Now here's the finished box of the same Sword Quest Waterworld game. I think there was a challenge or a prize you could get with this as well if you entered a contest or something. This just the box went for $735. Some of these were boxes that were normal standard boxes that they issued demo cartridges in as well so people could see what was coming out. People were investing money based on completed product. They had to see copies of it before they would finalize on some of these. 
Now here is the proto cartridge that would have went with that box we just showed you. This is a prototype. It's a loaner cartridge. You will see these loaner cartridges. All of the loaner cartridge labels look identical pretty much. It just has a sticker or it'll have a number for which game was included on it. It's supposed to be returned to the prototype lab. These do show up. You can see the insane amount of money that this went for $2,500. This one works. Again, the game graphics are terrible. The game itself isn't great for back in those days either, but still, excellent, super scarce Atari 2600 item. Now here's another group of demos, Telesystems. This is the original lot, complete set. Probably somebody who worked there who was able to test these, never returned them after the game was finally produced. There are a few boxes for some of these as well, as you can see. Fairly generic boxes, not much to them in all honesty. But still, $2,826 for this lot, plus shipping. And they're not in super, super condition. Now, these are just standard cartridges with basically a sticker over them. The sticker could be recreated, so it's kind of hard to tell on originals with some of these as well. There are reproductions and fakes out there, too, on many of these sorts of things. So be careful. These do look to be the original deal, though. And probably the holy grail, the most sought after one of the loner, the demo prototype cartridges, is Mario Brothers. Over $4,000 for this one. And it works. It's tested. Now, they do sell better if you can show that they work. So a screenshot is always a better thing to add to one of these. Always test them if you have the ability to test them. Most of the high-end sellers of video games have multiple test units. They'll be able to clean it and the whole works. People repair the game cartridges also. There's a huge industry around this. But these are super hot right now. I think the prices are the highest I have ever seen for any of the Atari 2600 right now, right this very second. But that's what I have for you today. Well, there you are. Hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. Faster than a speeding waitress. Faster than a short order cook. Faster even than a drive up window. It's fast food from Telesis, the hot new video game for your Atari VCS. Eat all the fast food you can, burgers, shakes, fries, as fast as you can, but watch out for the purple pickles. That's tummy trouble. Fast food, another very funny video game for your Atari VCS from Telesis, the fun and games people, of course.